One way, a farewell. We dismounted, shared wine. Where are you going? I asked. My dreams are shattered, you said. I'm retiring to South Mountain. Ask no more. And off you went. White clouds drift on forever. So we continue now with the first poem by Wang Wei. Now Wang Wei is the third best represented poet in this anthology. With a total of 29 poems, he comes immediately after Du Fu and uh, Li Bai, who have a little bit more than 30. Now, he was a very, very important Tang poet, and in contrast to the other two that we have just mentioned, he was a rather successful person in his lifetime. A child prodigy, he very quickly excelled in both uh, poetry and music and, uh, and painting as well. And he had a long career at court. He passed the Jinshi examinations very early when he was 20. He was quite successful. He had his up and downs, nevertheless. Probably his biggest down took place during the Al-Mushan Rebellion, when he was made a prisoner by the rebels and forced to serve under the puppet regime in uh, Luoyang. And afterwards, well, it took some time before he was reinstated in office. Now, he's, as I said, a Renaissance uh, figure, if you will, proficient in different arts. He tried to be a patron uh, to some other writers, most notably uh, one that we will encounter in this anthology, Meng Haoran, who was not successful in the examinations. In fact, the poem we have just read is precisely about Meng Haoran. That is the person to whom Wang Wei is saying goodbye in the capital. Uh, both poets cultivated a style of poetry that was um, centered in landscapes and landscape description in painting. And uh, there is also in one ways, not in this one perhaps, but in others that we will probably find in the collection, a very strong religious element because Wang Wei was a Buddhist and especially late in life he became even more intensely Buddhist. And uh, some critics tend to say that his poems are, you know, very, very much inspired by Chan Buddhist philosophy. Like they are descriptive of nature, deceptively simple, but, you know, complicated uh, when you really get to the bottom of them. And uh, emphasizing the beauty of nature at the same time as its ephemerality, as its uh, ultimate unrealness. But let's go on to this poem, which is quite a short one. In fact, Wang Wei was famous, uh, his most famous poems, his reputation is in his quatrains, his Chue Chu, uh, which are four lines of pentasyllabic or heptasyllabic verse. We will probably encounter many of Wang Wei's poems there when we reach that section of the anthology. But remember, this is a gushi. But, you know, it's short and sweet. It could be, uh, or it could be almost made to fit into the, 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 chuen, uh, the Chue Chu format. So what's the topic of the poem or topics? Well, the main topic is a common one we've already encountered, which is separation, parting of friends. And a sub-theme related, that it's the cause of this parting, it's failure in the examinations. And again, I think we will encounter quite a few poems in the anthology about this. In fact, the next one by Wang Wei is about the same topic. It's also about uh, giving consolation to a friend who has failed in the Jinshi examinations. And another subcurrent, it's a very short poem, but it's also about the life of uh, retirement, the life of the wandering sage or of the Taoist sage who renounces the world. So in the poem we get, let's paraphrase it, there is a meeting between two people. One of them is the poetic persona, which we imagine is one way, and the other, you know, historically we know that the other person is uh, his friend, Meng Haoran. So they meet each other, probably when going in different directions. They're in, on horseback. They dismount and share a cup of wine as good friends. And uh, whatever dialogue they have, it is reduced to the nutshell presented in this poem. Wang Wei asks where Meng Haorang is going. Meng Haorang transmits that his dreams of office, therefore of becoming a Confucian scholar official, of serving the country and the emperor, are over. He hasn't been able to pass the exam, so he won't be able to, to get a post. And he is retiring from the world, going to South Mountain, 
which I don't know if it's a specific mountain or probably one of the one of the, the mountains in the Chungshang range to the south of the capital. He says, ask no more. Probably don't try to persuade me to 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 not leave the world. And off you went. And the poem ends with, you know, with a very philosophical and beautiful image. So Wang Wei says, white clouds drift on forever. Now we might imagine white clouds were drifting after the meeting, but these white clouds are probably meant to be taken uh, metaphorically. So well, I think white clouds is a symbol used a lot for, 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 for hermits, for, you know, for Buddhist or Taoist uh, monks or sages or hermits who, who move around, who don't stay in one place but keep moving around from one place to another. So it could be a good image for a hermit. A hermit is a white cloud, a drifting white cloud. It could be used more generally, perhaps, as you know, as, an, as a, a metaphor for human impermanence, for how we just keep moving from one place to the other, how stability is not attainable for humans. Even in the best of cases, we age, we die. Uh, I would imagine that it really has an element of uh, or at least an attempt of consolation and flattery towards Meng Haorang. So he's probably meant to be depicted as this Taoist sage who who is retiring and drifting on instead of just any normal person. He was a good friend, of, as I said, of, of Wang Wei. In fact, they give their own names, the, the, the Wang Meng style, to, to the type of nature poetry in which they both excel and both are very good writers. So, very short poem, not much to comment on it. My dreams are shattered, my dreams of office. But again, we could read this, we could make a double reading of this, and make it the dreams of the world, the illusions of worldly success, of worldly triumph. It's a dream for Buddhists, a fake dream, an illusionary dream that ties you to the wheel of karma, of samsara. And one could almost say, from a Buddhist perspective, that it's good that Meng Haoran didn't succeed as he would have been trapped by the red dust of this world and because of his failure, he is free to lead the life of a hermit and to really reach the truths and the enlightenment that come as a consequence. So that's all for today. Tomorrow we will continue with another Wang Wei poem which is also about another scholar official who fails in the examinations. So until then, bye-bye.